congratulations for today, for the fa to the family. Mats, you predicted um, a tough first hour, mm -hmm. like it was going to be close. This is what happened. So is it a logical performance now? I think it's logical. I, I mean, I, I would think, I know Sasha said in that on-court interview that, that he, he won. That was the only good thing that happened. But yeah, I think you have to expect to play a, a tough first set against a good player. Then you expect some confidence and you play an easy third, second set. But I guess it's the, it's the third set that maybe uh, Mr. Uh, Big Brother Misha will have a chat to to Sasha about because he started off great and early in the, in the third set and then he lost his focus. So Misha, what, 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 what would you tell him about the third set specifically? Um, I would probably talk about decision making during a rally, like uh, when when they had that funny point on Altmaier's serve where Sasha um, just stopped play at the, in the middle of a point at the net, and then also the jumping forehead on his serve where he got broken. So it was really decision making during the point, and also how he reacted maybe a few times between points. Um, he showed that he was disappointed with the outcome of a few shots, and I think uh, that was key because overall the shots were there. He was hitting great shots. He was hitting good serves, good forehands, uh, very nice volleys so sometimes it was a little bit like the the game plan the shot selection and also the reactions between the points I would say yep. and Mats you figured out something that Alex was doing tactically very that was very smart from him he Did you was, want to share it with yes us? he was serving um, and I'm sure this is Misha's uh, idea as well he was serving mainly to Altmaier's forehand. Well, he's laughing already. <laughs> yeah, he, he's serving mainly to Altmaier's forehand. Obviously, this is the easiest serve, especially, I think, if you're a tall player, but Misha might have a different idea. But 67% in the ad court, 50%. And in the first two sets, 44% of the first serves were unreturned for, for Sasha in this match. So, uh, obviously, very, very clever serving. Was that your idea, Misha? <laughs> Well, all I said is Altmaier's backhand is a more natural shot. So probably in tough situations, he's going to put the backhand into the court and he might struggle a little bit more with the forehand. So, you know, if Sasha's serving a big serve, so um, the logical outcome is serve to the forehand. It's a bit more tricky technically, so he might miss a few more. Maybe chip the forehand return, which gives you the opportunity to approach and come in. Yeah, uh, Misha. I've got to ask you, because I heard you say that you, you think your brother is one of the favorites to win. I think we all think that. Do you find a different mindset in him right now? Because he's won the Olympics, won the ATP finals, and he really is one of the favorites. He can even become number one in the world. Do you sense a difference in your brother? Yes, he's extremely... Um, how do I say? He's extremely picky. Like every time he doesn't hit a shot perfectly well, he's, dis he's not disappointed. He's not happy. And sometimes um, I'm telling him, look, Sasha, you don't need to be perfect from day one. You need to be perfect when it matters. So give yourself a break. It's okay if you don't win every match one on one uh, w like the way you want to. So, um, you know, he puts a little bit too much pressure on himself at the moment. But I think it's going to like s the nerves are going to settle if he wins. You know, he won today. If he wins maybe one or two more matches and he starts to become more confident on the court, I think it'll settle and he'll just focus more on the big picture and not be so picky with the little things here and there that, that might go wrong. Mm. Matt, is it important for players like Zverev to be challenged during the first rounds in order to get in the rhythm mentally? I mean, I don't know. Obviously, that's a, that's a personal thing, I think. I would prefer to have a match exactly like today, like except maybe a few times in, the, in that third set. But at the end, he won another easy tiebreaker in that third set, and I think gives you a lot of confidence. So yeah, I think this is a perfect start. Yes, perfect start, Nisha. How is the atmosphere on the ground in general? We haven't asked you that. Well, it's actually, it's nice to see all the people here. Everybody was, you know, everybody's exciting to be here. Obviously, the last week was was very tricky with a lot of news, you know, happening around the tennis uh, with, with Novak. But now I think the people are happy to be here. They're excited. The crowd today was, was a lot of fun. I think um, there were a few people that had maybe a few too many drinks. But overall, <laughs> I think everybody's excited about the Australian Open. Yeah. That's what happens when you play night session, right? That's what happens when <laughs> you play night session. But I think they're session. getting excited. And they must have been excited about one really funny point that happened today during the match that Altmaier won. Yeah, this is an incredible point. Incredible point here. I mean, it happens maybe once a season, this happens to a tennis professional, <laughs> that you hit a shot that bounces over to your side and, and Altmaier did a great job. And he cannot touch the net there. That's, that's why it's hard to play balls like this, but he did, yeah, he did a perfect job. <laughs> <laughs> and they were both laughing at the end. Matt, oh, a question to you. So we're, yeah. 
Yeah, Matt, it's a question to you. So we were sitting in the box and, and one of our team members said, maybe Sasha should have positioned himself between the ball and the net to block Altmaier's view. And we're discussing, is this legal or not? So what's your take on it? I actually think it should be legal. Um, I think <laughs> you would call to be a hindrance to your opponent. But I like the idea, Misha. I think you run up and stand in between, <laughs> and then you risk getting smacked in the butt with a racket. Yes. <laughs> Great. It wasn't my idea, though. It wasn't my... <laughs> OK. Yeah, but we, well, I need to ask you, Misha, about the locker room. The locker room talk and the feeling about the whole Novak Djokovic saga. How do you, how do you think it's going to affect uh, Novak and how players might feel about Novak? Your brother was actually very, very positive. He was... He was uh, um, complimenting Novak and its difficulties as a superstar, on and on. But some players have been a little bit critical. What do you think that the over overall sense is? So, I haven't been to the players' locker room because it's strictly for players only. There's no coaches allowed. So, um, but, you know, talking to Sash, there's obviously there's players that take sides. It's, it's normal, it's human. Yeah. But I have to say, the locker room is somewhat also focused on, on the big goal. You know, like somewhere like Medvedev, Tsitsipas, uh, Nadal, for example, they want to win the Australian Open. So, they, yes, there was a lot of conversations going back and forth. And, and I think everybody, like, nobody knows what to say because it, it's political. Yeah. It has to do with, like, uh, so many different things that don't really, you know, a tennis player is not really touched and not faced by those things. So, yeah, Sasha said, uh, you know, it's it's complicated. You, you get the permission to come and then, like, it gets revoked. So it's a lot of back and forth. And at some, at some moments, we didn't have all the facts. I was actually receiving the facts and, and, and news from the media, from the radio, from TV. So we didn't really know what was going on as well. So mm -hmm. it was very, it was a tough week, I think, for everyone, for tennis, for Tennis Australia, for the people in Melbourne, for Australia, for Novak especially. But I think at, 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 in the end, you just need closure. And this is what happened. And um, yeah, now we just, we, we have to focus on tennis. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you, Misha.